Hi everyone, I'm Richard and I'll be walking you through this demonstration of Camera Perspective Editor for Unity. Now to start off, I'm going to just jump in and show you how to set up a camera from scratch with this new tool, and then I'm going to go through each of the controls available. So the first thing you want to do is select your camera, which in this case is actually just the main camera that comes in in a default scene in Unity. Uh, I just renamed it. Um, and go down to Add Component, and then you can search for Camera and you'll see the camera perspective editor. So if you click that, it'll add the new component. Now, I just want to point out that this new component doesn't actually replace the regular camera component. It just adds new stuff on top of it. So everything that's here, uh, if you look at the camera's view frustum inside of the scene view, you'll notice that as I change the field of view, it still updates properly. Um, and the you know far clip plane, uh, near clip plane, all that stuff. Um, and also the viewport recs still update properly. Uh, what this does is actually just adds new features to the camera in a separate component so that everything that you're used to doesn't go away. So going down this list of features, um, the first one we have is called Lens Shift. Um, now what this one's good for is you'll notice in here that the camera is kind of tilted up. You can tell because the lines of the edges are not quite, uh, per uh, not quite parallel to the edge of the view plane. Uh, so if I tilt this camera back down, you'll notice that they start to straighten out. Um, but what if uh, what you want is to see the top of this building, which you can't do if you have the camera at an angle of zero, um, but you still want these lines to be straight. Well, that's where this tool comes in handy. You can adjust the vertical shift, which is very much like the uh, shift on a tilt shift lens in real life, uh, you can use this to kind of shift the back plane of this view frustum upwards. And now in this scene view, you'll notice that there's these red lines that are making kind of a second view frustum here. And what that is, is camera perspective editor shows you the updated uh, camera perspective, unlike the original camera component, which just kind of stays at whatever the settings are at in there. Um, so as I tilt this up and down, you'll, you'll see it shifting the back plane of the frustum up and down. And in here, you can see that the top of this round building is still visible, even though all these lines are still perfectly vertical and aligned with the edge of the screen. Now, the next option um, is something that you can do if the camera is tilted and you want to keep it that way. So I'll set this back to zero and close lens shift. And then I'll uh, rotate my camera back up. So let's put it at 8.5. I believe it was negative 8.5, I guess. Um, and we'll go into lens tilt. And this, again, is similar to tilt on a tilt shift camera lens in real life. Uh, so uh, right now the lines are kind of at an angle to the edge of the screen. But if I adjust the vertical, you'll notice they kind of straight now, or they, I can make them more tilted if I wanted to for some reason. Um, and the camera is still actually at that negative 8.5 degrees angle. Um, the only thing that changed is this view frustum, you'll notice kind of got a little crazy um, and made the back of it very trapezoidal and uh, basically tilted compared to the normal back plane. And what that does is kind of adjusts the, the way that the light would enter the film on a regular camera. Um, so uh, the next thing I'll show you, uh, once I set this back to zero, is the position shift. Now, this probably isn't going to be too useful for a lot of people. Um, but if you ever have some random use for it, it's there if you need it. Um, and what this does is it shifts the entire frustum in any direction you want. So you can go up and down or left and right. And it doesn't change the shape of the frustum. It doesn't change your perspective at all. It just kind of moves it. And you'll notice that if I rotate the camera, the origin of the, the camera where all the light is coming into is kind of offset a bit. Now, the next thing is the skew option. And what this does is it actually kind of tilts the sides or, or the top and bottom of the camera 
um, in opposite directions, uh, very much like skew in a lot of uh, graphic editors that you've probably used. Uh, so if I do the horizontal axis, you'll see how everything kind of goes side to side. And the view frustum actually kind of does the opposite of what you see the buildings doing. And I can do the vertical as well. And the next thing is the aspect offset. And what this does is it actually changes the uh, shape of the back plane. So if I do the horizontal, it'll kind of stretch things out horizontally in the view. And if I do the vertical, it does the same thing with the vertical axis. And what you can possibly use this for is if you want to have more intense perspective on one axis than another, um, you can adjust, let's say, the horizontal so that you just have a really wide or narrow view, um, whereas the vertical perspective actually has the same foreshort foreshortening that it already had. Um, and then just to show you, the, uh, the aspect doesn't, uh, it doesn't actually uh, permanently mess up the camera's view frustum. Uh, compared to the screen size. So if I change this to free aspect and just fill this game view, you'll notice that it actually still updates in here. And then if I go to, let's say, my square setup, um, it's still offset by the same amount. And that goes for every single tool in here. None of it will break any of the controls in the default camera. So let's go back to 16 by 9. And uh, the last one, option in here is the clipping plane skew. Uh, now what this does is, well, you'll kind of notice it's messing things up there, um, but it basically just tilts the back plane of the view frustum side to side. You notice this isn't really affecting anything in the, uh, in the game view, because it doesn't change the perspective, it just kind of changes where uh, the back plane, uh, which is the, the far clipping plane, is uh, ending on each side of it. And you can do horizontal or ver vertical. And you'll notice that if I change this so that the left side is closer to the camera, it starts to cut things off. Um, it also kind of goes a little bit crazy in here as you go to extreme numbers. Um, but uh, you, you want to keep it small and, and just kind of tweak it to your needs if you ever have a need for cutting off the back plane at an angle. Now what I'm going to do next is go through a bunch of common perspectives, um, including uh, isometric perspectives, oblique perspectives, um, and I'm just going to show you how to set them up. And uh, along the way I'm going to be creating prefabs that uh, will actually come with the uh, camera perspective editor package uh, when, you, when you purchase it on the asset store. Okay, so this first custom perspective I wanna show you how to set up is called isometric. Now, the typical way to set this up in Unity is to just go into the standard camera component and change it from perspective projection to orthographic. This gets rid of all the uh, foreshortening and basically perspective from the camera. Um, and then I have a pivot object set up here, and what I'll do is rotate this pivot so that the camera orbits around the center of the city scene. And you'll notice that as I go up, you get closer and closer to an isometric perspective. Some people prefer 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, it all depends on what you want your project to look like. Um, but you'll notice that as I tilt this up, these vertical edges of the buildings here are getting shorter and shorter and shorter until I reach the top and they just kind of disappear completely. Now in a true isometric uh, perspective, that wouldn't happen. These uh, edges should actually remain the same length on the screen. Um, and the way that you can do that with Camera Perspective Editor is this. So I'll just zero this out here and select my camera and I'll change the name to True Isometric. Now, what you want to do is actually shift the back plane uh, vertically so that when you uh, get that isometric 
kind of angled view, these edges all remain the same length. And you'll notice that no matter how much I shift this, those edges are always going to be the same size. So let's set this at about 0.35. Now I'm going to show you how to create a perspective called Oblique Gentleman, or just Gentleman for short. Um, so the way that you set this uh, perspective up is you want to align the camera so that it's uh, directly uh, perpendicular to the face that you want to remain proportional as you adjust the shifting on the camera. So let's go ahead and just zero the camera out to start from scratch and then we'll change the name here to Oblique Gentleman. And we'll go ahead and save this camera under the pre-configured camera section. And now what we want to do is get rid of all the settings we had from the isometric view and then pull the camera back. So now we have the entire scene in view and actually we'll rotate this around and pull it back the other direction. So we have the lighter side of the buildings there and move it up a bit. And then to get that oblique gentleman perspective, what you want to do is increase the shift uh, until you have it offset a little bit to the right and offset a little bit vertically. And there you have it, oblique gentleman perspective. Now let's move the camera so that we can see it better here. And what this is commonly used for is a lot of old uh, RPG and kind of adventure style games. Uh, you'll see it in games like Earthbound. Um, and what you'll notice is that the fronts of these buildings are all exactly the same size they would be if you were looking directly at the front of them, um, because technically the camera still is looking directly at the front of them, but the back plane of the view frustum is shifted. So you get this kind of faked perspective, but you still have proportionately sized and scaled uh, fronts for these buildings, and you can see the tops. Okay, so this next perspective I'm gonna show you is called Oblique Frontal. Now let's go ahead and rename this camera. So it's Oblique Frontal. And I'll go ahead and create the prefab for that. And in this view here, you'll see I still have the gentleman perspective, but if I get rid of my horizontal uh, shift here and then just recenter the camera, there you have it, oblique frontal. So you have the fronts of the buildings all exactly proportional, and then you have no uh, kind of sideways shift so you don't get this kind of three quarters-y kind of look. You just have the fronts of the buildings and the tops of the buildings. So this next perspective is called uh, Oblique Top, which is basically the same as Oblique Frontal, except it's from the top. Um, so let's go ahead and rename the camera to Oblique Top and add the prefab. And I'm going to rotate this camera uh, so that it's looking straight down. So you'll notice in the game view how the uh, as I rotate the camera, it still updates. So you can actually get some weird, bizarre, kind of odd perspectives that you wouldn't uh, do in typical design setups, um, but they are available if you ever want to do something odd like that. So let's go ahead and rotate this so it's looking down and then position it so it's above the city view here. And I'll increase the size so we can see a little better. Um, and right now you can see the backs of the buildings, the shadowy side, which isn't exactly what we want. It kind of looks like we're upside down in a way. So uh, what I want to do is actually reverse the vertical shift of the camera so that it goes the other direction. And then I'll move the camera to compensate for that. And let's increase that a bit more so we kind of get taller looking buildings. And there you have it. We've got oblique top. This last perspective I want to show you is called oblique three quarter. Now I'm just going to go ahead and rename the camera here to oblique three quarter and create the prefab for it. And 
um, you'll actually notice that this is very similar to oblique top. In fact, it's so similar that all I really have to do is rotate the camera to about 45 degrees and uh, move it over. And then I'll just move it back a bit. And there you have it, oblique three quarter. So this is kind of uh, similar to what you might see in a lot of the old SimCity games um, prior to SimCity 2000. Um, and then SimCity 2000 or later would be the actual isometric perspective. Um, but yeah, this is it. So you actually have your rooftops being proportional, um, but they're at an angle. So uh, if you measured the size of this edge here along this rooftop, it would actually be the same length as if uh, you were still on the oblique top perspective. Um, or even the oblique front perspective, since that was looking from the front side there. Okay, so the last thing that's included with Camera Perspective Editor that I'd like to show you is in Standard Assets, Character Controllers, uh, and if you go to Classic 2.5D Example, um, this will be uh, an example of a perspective setup that's very similar to what you might have seen in older first-person shooter games like uh, Marathon or Dark Forces. Um, and the difference is that in modern uh, first-person shooters, when you look up and down, you actually tilt the camera. So let me kind of show you what that looks like here. So we'll select our camera from this first-person controller and just tilt it up and down. So you get those slanty edges. But in older uh, first-person shooter games, the computers couldn't really process that kind of information quickly enough. So what they did was they actually shifted the back plane, just like the tilt shift camera kind of effect. So if I hit play, I have a script attached that will actually do that. So as I look up and down, those edges stay the same angle. They don't change relative to the sides of the screen. Uh, but I can still see, look up and see the tops of the buildings and look down and all around. Um, and so let me go ahead and show you how this is set up. So if I uh, select this prefab here, um, it's just a prefab that you can drop in just like the uh, regular uh, character controllers, which are actually in this folder if you import the standard assets character controller package that comes with Unity. Um, this just kind of adds on top of that. And it actually uses the same scripts that comes come with those controllers. So you have your character motor, your input controller, and your mouse look. Um, however, on the prefab itself, the mouse look is the same on the root of the controller. But then if you look at the camera, you'll notice that the mouse look is gone and it's replaced with this classic FPS camera controller script. And what this does is it just lets you shift the back plane of the view frustum up and down uh, using the camera perspective editor um, and you have a max and a min range just like the angle on the mouse look script and you have a sensitivity and you can also invert it if you want. So that was the camera perspective editor for Unity. I'd just like to thank you for checking out this video and showing interest in the tool. Um, and if you want to purchase it, it's available on the Unity Asset Store for $15. Thanks and have a good day. Bye.